Hello, welcome to Meanwhile at the Castle, a podcast about knitting and sewing and all kinds of fun fiber and fabric related crafting. I am Queen Deborah. Oh, <laughs> you're Queen Deborah. How did I do that? Wow. <laughs> Should we start over? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You've always wanted to be me. I've always, wanted, I've always wanted to be you. Okay. You are? I'm Queen Emily. I'm Queen Deborah. <laughs> Excellent. And now I'm flustered. Okay. So, this is Meanwhile at the Castle podcast. <laughs> we are coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. Yes. And it is January 29th. I know. I'm so happy it's January 29th because that means there's only two days left of January. And that's wonderful. That's always a good thing. It's a good thing. And we have, um, a, 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 I can't even talk anymore, a Ravelry group, Meanwhile at the Castle, um, under Groups tab on Ravelry. And you can also find all our show notes either below this video, or if you want all the clickable links, you can find it at meanwhileatthecastle.com. And I think all of our contact information and everything, which is basically all it's all it's all there on the website as well as our Instagram handles are at the beginning of you the video. You know what? It's been a long time. Why don't you say what yours are? Oh yeah, sure. So I'm Salt City Knits. You can find me at Salt City Knits both on Ravelry and on Instagram. And you can find my yarns now at yarnbrary.com or on Etsy under Yarnbrary. And you can find me uh, at Indigo Chicken Dolls on Instagram and Indigo Chicken on Etsy and on Ravelry. Awesome. Okay. And it's been like almost three, well, two and a half weeks since we podcast yep. last. And we have big so. news. Are you ready for it? Yes. Are you ready? Here, here. Okay. We're going to Stitches West. Yay! Who's excited? Oh. Who's going? I know we're both yes. way excited. We've been talking about going and meeting people. Yes. We're going to do it. It's about time. It's actually way past time for us it to do is, something like it this. It is long overdue. Yeah. So this so. is the year to see people to meet you. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to Stitches West, we'd love if you see us to come and introduce yourself. Please do. Love. That would be, that's like, that's what we want 80% <laughs> of our reason for being there. Yes. The other 10% is like, leave the kids and knit for a weekend. And that's like 10% yes. and then 10% maybe shopping. <laughs> the rest, we just want to meet. We want to meet you. Lovely people. Yes. Uh, and we hope to have something lovely to give you and also in yep, exchange. Absolutely. So if, it, if it makes it in time. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping. So, so it's right. January 29th, like, I, like we said before, and that is the most wonderful thing because that means that the longest month of the entire year is almost over. Mm -hmm. <sighs> It's pretty much been like a year already. It <laughs> really has. The the it really has. It's been a long month. Luckily, we have some birthdays to like break it up with Aria's birthday and your birthday, yeah. which was so fun. Yeah, we went to Taco Taco because Yum. everybody needs tacos. Birthday everybody. tacos especially. Birthday tacos. They even had a $2 special just for me that day. <laughs> it was just for you. <laughs> It's ladies, nights on, ladies night on Thursdays. And, um, we go there. and we're going back on another Thursday. because They good. planned it just for me. I know they did. They did. They knew you were coming. <laughs> they knew you were coming. And then we went and knit in the lobby of Little America Hotel. Now that sounds weird, but if you have been to Little America Hotel, it is a destination just it's on its beautiful. own. Just the lobby where they had uh, a pianist playing the grand piano and they have uh, just lovely seating area with mm -hmm. fires place a uh, fireplace and Lots just going to the bathroom couches. there I'm sorry <laughs> it's an event that is an event itself <laughs> my daughter says it's like rock walking down a runway it's everything the lighting is beautiful <laughs> everything is high and there's it's, fresh flowers everywhere which is such it's a great so thing. lovely so lovely it was and nice. our sweet friend Lauren came and she yes she made me a special gift which was really really so sweet. fun Okay, she's been starting to weave, and she made me this little hand-woven pin cushion. Look how adorable. It's so cute. Because <laughs> I collect pin cushions. Yes. So, that In fact, really we should just talk about Lauren for a second, because Lauren is the dyer behind Rhapsody Fiber Arts, and she's also calls herself a bunny hoarder. She's not <laughs> a hoarder. She takes very good care of her bunnies. Yeah. But she has um, several angora rabbits i think five now the one that she and just so rescued it's so fun to see her post about that but yes. i had to show a skein of yarn that i have from lauren which is so beautiful 
I probably will knit something for my husband out of this. Yes, she'll... yes and here's her. Emily, that her would label. be very adventurous to knit your husband. I know it's that, got it's gray and purple. Yeah, but he <laughs> likes purple. He doesn't That's wear good. it very often. But I think for socks he would. And I've decided that I need to knit him more things. So I'm yeah. Anyway, that will be for him. Isn't that beautiful though? It is. It's gorgeous. Very lovely. Anyway, that's it's called um, Dark Army. It's the name of that colorway. So it's gorgeous. Anyway, Lauren is wonderful. We love her. <sighs> so let's yeah. talk about some knitting. All right. You probably better go because <laughs> I have very, very little. Well, I promised <laughs> I, I, I forgot to bring these last time and I promised that I would bring them. So these were my finished object from last time. And I have worn them so much since I finished them. Um, these are knit with this yarn is Dragon Horde yarn in the Molly Weasley colorway. And then the, the uh, heels, you can't really tell, but there's a little bit of sparkle, Stellina, Silver Stellina in there. And this is from Yarn Cafe Creations, but I don't know the colorway name. I apologize for that. And these were Christmas. The yarn was Christmas gifts from Tristan and Christy, who are just wonderful. And um, anyway, these are my fa one of my favorite pairs of socks now. I've worn them several times. Yeah, the colors are perfect for you. They are. They're very me. And it's Molly Weasley. She's just awesome. So I want to be here when I grow up. Because we already decided I wanted to be you when I grow up, apparently. Yeah, yeah you've you always... It's true. It's true. Do you introduce yourself as Queen Deborah everywhere? That might explain a few no. things that's happened. No, just kidding. Say, just kidding. You look so different in your pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about the fact that I was going to say, I'm Queen Emily, and then you were going to say Queen Deborah, <laughs> and then I just said your name for you. That's good. That's anyway, good. there you go. So that's one of my projects. I don't have any finished objects knitting related I have some, okay well I've got a couple sewing, more so let's see so keep, one of them I'll have going. to have you insert a picture because I've already given it to the intended recipient but our sweet friend Krista is having a baby and she's wonderful and actually she's learning to knit I've been teaching her to knit she's working on some projects so but I knit a little tiny teensy tiny little sweater called Misty Lily. This is by Gabriella Dance Knit, and I've um, talked about her Lancashire Dream sweater pattern several times, which I think is kind of one of the great basics of a wardrobe for little kids. It's, um, anyway, and this one is another great one. It's just got these sweet little lace panels running down the front, and there's garter, um, ribs around the neck, down the front, at the hem, and at the sleeve cuff. <clears throat> so it's very, very simple. Knit in a fingering weight, and I knit it out of this yarn, which I would have to say is one of my earliest colorways, back before I knew I was going to be a yarn dyer oh, I officially. Know you that one. Yeah, this so is one I dyed. In fact, it's the yarn that's in my pink version of my Sweet Summer Nights shawl. That's right. And, um, Anyway, it's just so perfect for a sweet, tiny, newborn yes. baby girl. Her name's going to be Serenity. And Krista loved it, and it's wonderful. So anyway, hopefully we've inserted a picture at this point, and you can see that. But that was exactly what I needed to get my mojo back. My knitting mojo was knit baby sweaters. A tiny little adorable lace sweater. So then I cast <laughs> on another sweater and finished it. And so I also knit this one. And this is a harvest. It doesn't have a button yet. I did put one fairly large buttonhole right here, but this is Harvest by Tin Can Knits. And it's knit in Malabrigo Rios because oh, I think that's what Malabrigo I need to start Rios. Rios. It's I really yeah. it is the squishiest yarn. It's so wonderful. Anyway, and this is called Whale's Road is the colorway. And um, this was so enjoyable. Sometimes you just have those pro projects where every stitch you just like, huh, yeah, <laughs> huh, that's how I was feeling about this. And it's a really fun con um, construction. I hadn't knit this one before, but it's fun how you knit just this much of the collar and then you pick up stitches and go from there. And so it's kind of a fun way to 
create it. This is knit in a size 4 or 5 and is going in the future grandchildren stash. It's so <laughs> precious. I just <laughs> love it. Oh. Anyway, oh, and here's what that yarn looks it's like. It's not so far off for you, Emily. It's getting closer. Well, you better we'll just see. I mean, I do, have, I do have my oldest son is going to be 22 in a few weeks. You know, but there's time. No, there is but time. still, there's time to knit. <laughs> so that's kind of the point. So those are my finished objects. Way to go. Yeah. Three, three. Well, this Good one job. was done before. <laughs> the socks were done before. I just hadn't shown them yeah. yet. But there's so but much two fun. Little bait. And then, yeah. So got my knitting mojo back. Good. Makes me happy. And I know you're I've been taking a, it. well, I, was, I started after, after our last podcast or slightly before that taking kind of a knitting break but I was doing a very poor job of it <laughs> where every day I'm like well just a little bit I won't knit much and like two hours later and and it was just causing all sorts mm. of chaos in for my wrist and my elbow and my shoulder I actually injured my shoulder oh. taking my dog for a walk <laughs> oh no <laughs> because she was just yanking all over the place and it was just trying to hold on oh, was no. crazy because she was she has cabin fever it's winter yes and it was crazy so anyways i finally had to sit down and have a good talk with myself and this was like a week and a half ago and said listen if you want to be able to knit forever you need to be in better control of yourself so i didn't knit at all for a week and then after that, I'll pick it up, and if I notice any issue, I just I just don't knit at all. I just stop. And so I've had very little progress on things in the last three weeks. So at least as far as knitting goes. As far as knitting goes, mm -hmm. yeah. But I have worked on my afterthought everything socks three weeks ago. I was about here. Now I do have to say I did not knit all of this. <laughs> My husband has knit probably two of the inches and my youngest daughter knit a little bit. So, but I'll just knit like two or three rows a day and that's what we've got. But right here is my, where I'm marking, you can't even see it. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. But where I'm marking where the first sock will end and where the second sock begins. So I have, if I fold it in half, or fold it down where my marker is. I have this much more to knit and then the cuff. And then I can separate them and, and do afterthought heels and toes on both of them. And this yarn is the by Knit Song Yarns and the colorway is Telegraph Avenue. I've showed this several times. It's yes. lovely. Yes, it is. Lovely, lovely. It's very so, springy. It is. So delightful. And it's the easiest one for me to knit on, so that's why this one's had some mm. progress. Because all of the other ones with patterning or holding, doing magic loop, that one has been harder. Because this one, I can do smaller movements. But I've actually discovered what helps more is not flicking like I've been doing, but mm. actually letting go and doing a bigger movement oh, and wrapping. It's fatiguing a different, it's yeah, giving so that part of your body It's much rest. slower, but when I do it that way, I can actually knit with less strain. Overall. That's interesting. So it's much slower, but that's not as slow as knitting at nothing. Uh, not knitting at all. Yeah. <laughs> so that's hard. I've had to take knitting breaks before and it just feels like a drought yes. to me. Like this big And it always seems yeah. to be when you really want to knit most. Yes. And it's probably because I've been knitting so much because yeah. I'm really excited that I've needed to take the break. So there's there's one of the things I've worked on. I have a couple awesome. of things I've worked on. You? Let's see. So I have this pair of socks that I'm working on and I finished, I haven't put the heel in yet, but I finished the little tube. It's going to be a fairly short ankle. So I've got my little stripe of, let's see if you can see it, contrast thread right there. That's the part I'll pull out and put my afterthought heel in. Um, I don't like having to snip my yarn and having two more ends to weave in, so I just try and plan ahead where I'm going to put my afterthought heel in, put a scrap piece of yarn, and then I can 
you know, pick up the stitches on either side, then pull that piece out and, and it just naturally opens it up. And this, um, but I haven't cast on the second sock yet because this was just really boring to me. And I don't know why it was boring. The yarn is beautiful. Yeah, self-striping yarn is usually just really It's really, really fun usually <laughs> fun. Um, it's a lovely, lovely because yarn. Because it was just plain knitting. You were getting bored of stuff. I just wasn't really it. in the mood. And I, for some reason, I, yeah. But this, it's beautiful yarn. It's this lovely self-striping ball. But I, I think by Scrumptious Pearl. But again, this is one that I got without a label on it. Um, and then I've been use, doing this for the contrast, which is Pirat and Vola. And um, anyway, so I did finish the toe and I, I think I'm ready to cast the next one on. I need a sock project for class tomorrow. I teach a writing class and when they have just some work time, I will usually knit during that class. So that's just... Ooh. Let's talk about Baby afterthought stepping. heels. Oh, yeah. So, um, I like heel flap and gusset mm -hmm. because it fits really well. It doesn't yes. stretch across your instep. The stitches don't stretch and pull. Mm -hmm. um, you can really get that to fit however you need it to fit. But usually doing a short row heel or a traditional afterthought heel, it will stretch and pull. So do you have a, a heel that you like, or do you I, not care about that? I've done yeah. just the afterthought heel, but I've been noticing, I was watching um, Mina Phillip, how she's been doing garter stitch mm -hmm. afterthought heels, and I thought, well, that's a brilliant idea because garter stitch has so much give. Mm -hmm. And with an afterthought heel, I kind of think like, if you wear out your heel, it's easy to pull it out and put a new one in instead of worrying about trying to patch it. So I think that's what I'm gonna try mm -hmm. on these as a garter, I don't know, maybe. I've done some of both. If I give myself enough stitches in the leg, then I tend to be okay with an afterthought heel, although it still isn't my favorite fit. Okay. So, I don't know, what do you think? I've knit several different types of heels over this last year. That was kind of my goal to try a lot of mm -hmm. different techniques. And the one that I liked for, that wasn't a short row heel, that was an afterthought, was, if I can remember the name, it was weird. It was high hat thumb joint heel, I believe. Hmm. Um, I'll have to put a link in our uh, show notes for that one. Oh, sure. Let me write that down. And what I liked is if you, it fit really well. It, it was a deeper heel so that it gave more room mm -hmm. where the instep stitches didn't pull so much. Yeah. Um, but if you were to just look at just the heel it's almost like a mini hat <laughs> so it kind okay. of really goes but like it's 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 round and you knit you just knit in the round when you uh -huh. pick up stitches um essentially like the length of your thumb joint okay before you start doing decreases and then you and do you like decrease. a decrease and then the next one decrease once you know one stitch yeah closer i don't remember and... exactly but i mean you'd mm -hmm. need to get the pattern it wasn't uh -huh. a free pattern i don't sure. believe okay. um but it fit really well it fit really well it doesn't look like the regular heel i've shown it before on uh -huh. here but i'm gonna do that on on these socks so that i can show fine. you how that looks but it fits really well and it was uh, really simple to do. Nice. So that's that's my favorite. If you have a favorite that you like that fits well, doesn't pull across the instep, please suggest that in the mm -hmm. in the comments below. I think that what it comes down to is, no matter what, an afterthought heel is gonna f or or a short row heel is just gonna fit differently mm -hmm. um, because there's just not as many stitches through that area, but. Well, Mina Phillip also yeah. has another heel pattern. It's not an afterthought. It's one that you knit as long as you go. But it's a short row heel with a modification that has a little bit of a heel flap before you start doing the short row heel. Mm. I haven't tried it. That's on my list to do. That's interesting, um, yeah. So it's kind of merging the two together so that you mm -hmm. can have a good fit that way. Yeah, that sounds so. nice. Well, I was really sad. I have a pair of socks that... Um, oh, I got hair in my mouth. <laughs> I knit, um, I think I finished them on my birthday, which is in October. And I've shown them before. They were knit from the yarn that I got 
um, at Willow Hill that they did around Halloween, which oh, was their yes. Harry Potter yarn. Yep. So I knitted in the Transfiguration colorway, and I put Malabrigo sock, um, heels, toes, and cuffs, and. I, so I made them in October, which isn't that long ago, and I've worn them, but just in my regular rotation, not like every day. Yeah. And I've already worn through the ball of the foot and the heel of the foot, and I knit wow. a deeper toe. So that Malabrigo is where I wore I wore in on both hmm. of those. I've never I have caught um, stitches and like torn a stitch and that had a hole, uh -huh. but I've never worn through the heel or the ball of the foot in any other socks. And I have other Malabrigo socks and yeah. I knit you socks out yeah. of that same yarn. I mean, I, I haven't knit them, or knit, worn them since October. I got them for Christmas, so right. I haven't had any problem with that yet. So we'll but see. I'm a little, yeah, be careful. Let me know if you have problems yeah. and I'll patch them for you. But I was really sad about that because those were really cute. And, and the yarn is so pretty. Oh, and it feels so nice. I know, I love Malabrigo. You know how I love Malabrigo. Yeah. Anyway. It just may not be a, the yarn for socks. At least not heels and toes. Yeah, we'll have to see. I have other, like I said, other socks knit out of Malabrigo that I've worn regularly. Which is that one. That I haven't had a problem with. Hmm. And it's both, they're Malabrigo sock. I don't know. It's just weird. Hmm. Oh, All right. Are you cold? Yes. I have my sweater on, so I'm okay. That's okay. Let's Here, we see. should show what we're wearing. Oh, yes. I'm wearing a scrappy bias shawl. There you go. It's beautiful. The pattern I is like by to Emily. I like to tie the little ends in knots. They're That's just cute. cute that way. But it doesn't match too per I was going to wear something else, but I'm like, well, this just matches my sweater and my It matches top. perfectly. Perfectly. So. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yes, em this is Emily's free pattern on yeah. Ravelry, the Scrappy Bias Shawl. It's so fun to see it people knitting it because it's, it's a fun knit. pretty it's popular. Really, and that's really fun, fun knit. I like doing that one. I've knit, well, I would say two, but it was one and a half because we shared. Yeah. We, we shared the project back and forth That's and knit true. together on it. So, yeah. but I really liked it. This one is my good vibe shawl that I knit for our neon along this Just last so summer. Fun! It looks really pretty. On and you. the yarns are Hula Girl by Beach Bum Yarn, mm -hmm. and then I knit, I dyed this yellow, and this pink one is Park Rose by Knit Picks. It's a Knit Picks. Is a stroll? Nope, no. nope, nope. I don't remember, but it's it's one of their yarns. So <laughs> beautiful. And I'm going to change how I'm wearing it because You're I gotta wear cold. it granny style. Well, I was. That's the. I have the yellow and white one that's hedgehog fibers and then an undyed skein. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna wear that today, and that's then ended up wearing this one instead. So that would have been oh, funny. I can wear it babushka style like you were. <laughs> we <Hello>. were over. <laughs> Yeah, we went, when we went out for her birthday, we get downtown to go to the restaurant and it starts snowing while we're driving and I'm like, I did not bring, I mean, I had like a sweater and a shawl on, so I had my shawl up over my head, you know. And then there's sweater around it. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it was like a good a, look for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. what, are you, what else do you have going on? I have my cowl that I started Sweetie. last time. I haven't made too much progress on it. Well, I know I'm 50% at least of the way through because I'm 50% of the way through my yarn. There you go. So I am... And you're doing a one skein. This is going to be a one skein. This is a single skein mm -hmm. um, cowl. The yarn, I got to look in the right bag, the same bag as the one <laughs> is MJ Yarn's uh, Sophista Sock and it's Dragon's Blood is the... Did you get yarn. this at Willow Hill? No, I bought this one at Wool Cabin. Willow Hill started carrying yes, I saw MJ that. yarns. And that's also the same yarn that I knit my husband's sock out of socks out of recently that mm -hmm. I hated the yarn and then at the end I was like, I love this yarn. The so, Joseph colorway, yes. right? Yep. So it's just um cables. But I kind of am to a point now where I need to make a decision as to design I have a few things in mind of what I'm going to do. So it's gonna sit there while I'm taking a knitting break and I percolate on the thought process of designing this. Um, what were we talking about? I don't know, we had a little interruption. So, oh, my cow. Yes, okay, it's sitting there. design, <laughs> trying to figure out what you wanna do with the design of it. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be gorgeous, I'm excited for that because when you finish it, then I wanna <laughs> try one out with your pattern. I don't know that 
I'm not promising that there's a pattern. <laughs> okay, but you can like just say, this is how I did it, and okay. I can copy you, right? Okay, sounds good. Does that work? <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Okay. <laughs> All, All right, right. so I've got this there. project. Oh, wait, you got to show the bag. Oh, yes, I do want to show this bag. This is a fun bag. This was actually given uh, given to me through the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted. And this is by Daisy Girl. And it's such a cute bag. Um, Daisy Girl and Company. So there's her little label. And you can find her on Etsy. I love that yellow. Isn't that fun? So she asked what I wanted in a bag and I said, I want something with, I wanted to make sure I had a wrist loop and a drawstring that was a slightly bigger one, bigger than just a sock bag, you know, at least a shawl. And I mean, she let me pick out the fabric. It was totally customized for me, which was awesome. That it's got lining. a great, cute, fun, bright lining. That lining a is double you. pocket in there, a little loop for um, stitch markers. And the canvas is specifically so I can put my pins on it. I just haven't yet because, yeah, whatever. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so I was at the craft store and um, there was a freakishly good deal on yarn. And I have um, my daughter, Aria, my 19-year-old, who she really just needs some more clothes and specifically some good basics. Um, and so I was looking at knitting her a, a sweater. I was already looking at patterns and thinking of that when I saw this yarn. And this is going to be a big squashed, messy craft store skein. So give me a second. But this is on a killer deal. And it's Lion Brand Touch of Alpaca. But this color is her favorite color. I mean, she just loves this, you know, that soft kind of muted pink mm -hmm. so much. And it goes with everything she owns. Um, so perfect color, great deal. Somebody who wants a washable garment. There you go. Magic. So what's the sweater? The sweater oh, no. is called French toast by Alicia Plummer or Alicia. I don't know how she, I, I always say Alicia cause that's how Danny says it <laughs> on little bobbins. And it's just, um, there's not, this is the only picture in the pattern. Um, but it's actually like a three quarter sleeve. It looks like a vest in this picture. I Are you think. going to do a three quarter sleeve? Yeah. So I'm planning on doing a three quarter sleeve and it's a mostly fitted pullover with a scoop neck and just this really fun cable that's made. Um, it's a slip stitch center panel that just cables every, like, I don't remember how many rows, which doesn't matter because you should get the pattern. Um, but it's just so pretty and it's got some waist and hip shaping to it and so anyway i cast that on and of course it's not that interesting to look at because i'm just in the top section i've just barely started working the slip stitch panel in the front and i'll be cabling on the next row but i think it's going to be quite pretty and that color is just lovely it's a little, like when I first cast it on, I wasn't sure how I felt about it just because I'm like so used, you know, I just came off Malabrigo Rios into this Lion Brand acrylic alpaca blend, um, which basically feels like um, acrylic with a lot of animal hair sticking out of it. How do you feel? It's not, once I got into it, it's, it, I was like, no, that's, it's nice. Yeah. But feels... the first couple rows, I was like, eh, I don't know about this, <laughs> but it's really pretty. And she is just so excited about it. So that's really fun. I bought enough yarn to do this sweater for her and then an actual sweater for my husband. Oh, really? Like oh yeah. I sweater for him. Picture. And I posted a picture on Instagram. I didn't even bring the yarn because I'm smart, but I'll show it when Once I'm ready to cast it on. Um, it's definitely like a grayish color. It looked kind of green in my photo on Instagram because I took the picture at night when there was horrible lighting. But yes, and I know what sweater I'm going to do for him. But apparently I'm just knitting lots of sweaters right now. And I still have two for me sitting on the needles. Oh, Emily. Yeah. That's okay. Sometimes you just need a break from a project yeah. until you just fall in love all over again and want to start and I have a, go crazy. Yeah. With it. I have a feeling I'll get to the sleeves on this sweater and then decide to go back and work <laughs> on Because that's where I am on my fancy cardi. It's just waiting for sleeves now. I've finished the body, but it needs sleeves and I just haven't wanted to do it. But now I kind of do right now. 
that's weird. <laughs> like right this second. I want to knit everything, everything, especially <sighs> socks. I was kind of in a sock slump where I was like, yeah, I'm kind of done yeah. with socks, but I just want to knit a million right now. It's hard. I want to knit everything and dye everything. You know, I want to get a sock knitting machine really bad. And I want then, you to get a sock knitting machine really bad. And then I will spend all of my time actually knitting all of the other things that I don't do because I spend it knitting socks. Because socks to me are the ones that I want to knit the most because I want to have a good collection of them for my whole family. All of my family loves mm. them. But that takes most of my time. So then I don't end up doing all the other ones that the I want. Fun things, yeah. Which socks are still fun. And I they love are. having socks on the go because nothing is better. It's, it's so portable. True. If you're just doing stocking it, you don't even have to look at it. I mean, that's what I like to take when I go to the movies. Mm -hmm. I went to the movies last week. And I was like, what am I going to do without my knitting? Because I'm not knitting right now. And I was thinking, what did I do before I knit? And I realized, oh, I ate. <laughs> I ate you know, that's for two true. hours straight. <laughs> I didn't need that. So. She's like, <laughs> just more eating and more, and the more stressful the movie was, or the more suspenseful, the more I ate. Chew faster, chew so. faster. He's trying to get away from the bad guys. Chew faster. <laughs> so, no, and I would have a jaw ache if I took mm. gum so I wouldn't eat, and my jaw would just, oh, I, don't gum. I don't chew gum anymore. So. We can't, that's the problem, is because we can't just sit. You have I to don't. have something to do. I know. Yeah, that yeah. is really hard. Really hard what do you guys do if you don't knit when you go to the I'm sure you guys all knit that's like asking a dumb question so well, a lot of people though really struggle with knitting in the dark mm -hmm. with even if they're just working on stocking it I don't know that's what I think about people who who crochet and don't knit because I mean crochet is awesome but it's hard to do without looking at it and that's one thing that's so awesome about knitting, knitting. Is you can just yeah anyway, you yeah. don't have to look for the at most it. part Depending on what you're doing, you don't. Yeah. You don't always have to look. <clears throat> so. Yep. That was that was a really hard movie. We went and saw um, Greatest Showman. Which is so good. Which is fabulous, but I ate for two hours. <laughs> I'm so, hungry, so let's not talk about that. <laughs> okay. okay. Here's here is some gorgeous yarn. Now this is two projects here in one, so I don't want them to get all tangled. Look at this yarn. Okay. This is Romeo. And then this is Juliet. This is by... This is yarn from Yarnbrary Yarns. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it. I really... When, it. when Emily posted them, I was really glad that I made the update because <laughs> I got some from the update. Because this is a perfect color for my husband. It's not a boring blue. Look at that. There's a lot of layers in there. <sighs> Lovely. My goal was to knit his and her socks for Valentine's Day. That's It's not going to be for Valentine's Day now, but it'll still get knit. So, I knit the cuff on my sock. It has a little cable down, so down the cuff. And then... I forced Emily to knit the cuff for oh, my yeah, husband. Oh yeah, she forced me. I was like, please, I forgot knitting. Do you have anything? And I said, I brought knitting for you. I was so I just, happy. I was excited that she wanted to <laughs> knit and didn't bring her own so that I could at least get the cuff done on this. So look how, pr oh wait, let's get the, the cable there. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Love it. I'm glad you love them. And this is from her Literary Lovers line. Literary lover's line. Alliteration is a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all that's been done. I can't even say I knit it. <laughs> that's really fun though what your plans are for those socks. You have to tell them that. Well, we'll see because with my knitting issues, I may not do so much designing. But yeah. this sock, the cable is meant to continue partway down the leg and come to a point it's a dagger, and then we'll have a heart design in lace. So it's like a dagger through the heart. That's this design. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> and then we'll see if I do this this pattern. This one, um, the patterning in it should be, uh, if, if it works out how it works out in my head, would be a skull and crossbones for Romeo. Because for poison. He, for poison, because he took the poison and then she had a dagger through the heart. So, so tragic. That's the plan. 
we'll see how that goes eventually. I hope that it goes well <laughs> because I'm really excited to see them. I don't have any other projects. Do I have any other projects? I don't think so. No, that's it. How about you? You have some sewing. I have some sewing because I haven't done much knitting. I love to sew. I decided to go back to my first love that has been poorly neglected other than making project bags, which I have made a lot of project bags and I've had a lot of fun. I've been sketching designs for this year, new designs, and I've been sewing some different designs, which were fun. But I made a shirt. I had this pattern from Little Taylor S. Um, she's on Instagram. And this is the Emmeline T. And I sewed this version. This is version two in a sheer and lace fabric. And I'm gonna hold it here. I didn't wear it because if I wear it, you can't see all the fun laciness right now. I need to get a better um, shirt that I wear underneath it so that it can show off all of the fun lace paneling. So pretty though. But, it's so pretty on you. Thank you. I have a couple of pictures that I will insert here, but you still can't see the lace really well because I'm wearing a black shirt under black lace. That you wore it on your birthday. I did. I wore it on my birthday. And so I made a couple of adjustments because this pattern is perfect for doing just about whatever you want. If you notice on here on version two, it has kind of this folded back cuff and then it has a binding right here and the bottom is just a regular rolled hem. But on here, I with the sheer fabric and lace, I actually did a black satin binding. I cut the cuff length off and did black satin lining, lining on the neckband. I lengthened the whole thing about two inches and added the binding on the bottom as well. Did you make the back longer than the front too? No, or is that just how it's hanging. Hanger? I was just wondering. It's how it's hanging. hanging. Let's see. I can get this to show properly. That it's, was on your last top that you showed that you had made the, the yes. back longer. That's right. I just like everything a little bit longer because you know how I feel that leggings are not pants. <laughs> but I still want to wear them as pants because so they're so to, comfortable. So you have I want, to cover your rear end. I want to cover my rear end because <laughs> nobody wants to see that. And the so, people who do, you don't really want them to see it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I said that and then I've been doing some embroidery and these are so cute. I like just to embroider little designs and then I just stash them away until I decide what I want to do with them. So I've embroidered two little birds in a nest, the perfect for spring they and so sweet. I like to put some it's 100% cotton batting behind my embroidery uh, for a couple of reasons. One, if you do, let's see, you don't see any of your threads going between stitch it between design elements. You don't see it from the front, which you often do um, when you're doing embroidery just on your fabric without anything behind it. But I also like that it gives it a little bit of more texture and poofiness to it a little bit. And I often put these in bags um, and add them into patchwork projects. And so I like the fullness that it gives it. And the back of your embroidery is ridiculously tidy. It is? <laughs> yeah, especially compared to when I embroider. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like here's the front, here's the back. Uh-huh. <laughs> you can actually face. tell what the picture is on the back too. <laughs> Completely different for me. <laughs> and then I oh, that's so started pretty. this heart. I love Lazy Daisy Stitch, you know, the flowers all around. Um, and then it has kind of like this ribbon design oh, that I'll so do in satin pretty. stitch there and a little butterfly that I'll do. My favorite way to embroider though is simply the back stitch. That's what I, I do yeah. for 90%. That and and um, is it French rope? knots. Oh, French knots. That's my favorite. I just do that for almost everything. I'm, there's so many different stitches you could do, but pretty much I use back stitch, French knots, and lazy daisy stitch, and that's about the extent. Sometimes I'll do some satin stitching. But this is how I love, this is how I store my floss for the colors that I'm going to be using. 
I love them on these little clothes pins. I mean, come on, it's adorable. That is adorable. I could write, I mean, I have before the color um, number of the floss on here, um, but I change them out so frequently that I just don't do that. And I'm not one where I need an exact color or anything. I don't stress about that. I just pull out whatever looks pretty. So that's how I hold on to mine. And I keep it in, this right here is a makeup bag that I bought, I don't know, eight easily years ago. And this was always my go-to, like my portable sewing project bag. Before I even knew about project bags, I had a project bag for sewing. And I put a little pin cushion on it. And then I usually hold my scissors and some little like pencils or removable ink like pens and then it has pockets for me to put my thread in and everything and so that's how I keep my that's brilliant sewing projects when I go places so I've always had a project on the go even before I knit oh yes you always have I've never it's hard to it's even hard to go to church <laughs> sometimes without a project I have to tell you a funny story so yesterday in church, we have a women's meeting called Relief Society. And so we're sitting in this women's meeting and the lady gets up to teach the lesson and she picks up a ball of yarn and she had this object lesson about being united and how we're all connected to each other. But I just got so excited because there was yarn in <laughs> the like, room. What are we doing with yarn? And everybody today? in our congregation knows this about me. <laughs> so she stood up and I was like, ooh, yarn. And everybody's laughing. And she's like, I'll give it to you at the end of the lesson. And I'm like, I don't really want it. I don't really want that yarn. It's, it was like, you know, not something that I would ever use. But it was just <laughs> funny how my heart was like, Ooh. <laughs> Skip to beat for a minute. Because <laughs> I don't take any kind of knitting to church, even though I really want to, like, take it and sit and just knit while people are talking and you're listening to sermons and things like that. But I don't. I want to I want to be present. I want to focus and I want to set a good example for my kids. Yeah. So I don't. But I really Sometimes want to. Sometimes it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's really hard. Actually, on my birthday when we had kind of a little knit night at the lobby of the hotel, my sister came and her daughter, so my sister and my niece, and they started to knit. They my mm -hmm daughters taught them how to knit and they were working on one of my daughter's projects or something and we have a little bit of a video that I'll put at the end of mm -hmm. them knitting. It's really cute. But my sister said, I think knitting, I mean, I think I want to learn to knit, but really I want to just do embroidery. Will you show me that? So I went up yeah. to her house the next day. Oh, fun. And, yeah. I was, and I took up a little kit for her to do some embroidery and she sent me a couple of videos of her and her daughter embroidering and having fun with that. And then she messaged me yesterday and said, is it wrong that when I go to church, the first thing I think of picking up is my embroidery rather than looking for my other things that I take with me to church? She's like, I really want to embroider when I go. It's <laughs> like, yes. Good job. I think you. I think you may have captured her, <laughs> reeled her in. I mean, not that I'm trying to distract her when you're going to church and. <laughs> Not, not while you're at church, just in general. <laughs> yeah, just distract her in general from all the things that we should really be doing. I know. Yeah. That's so fun, though. I'm the same, though. I definitely, I yeah, definitely just, want to do to that. To show you some presents that I got for my birthday. Um, now, I don't show them to gloat and to brag, but just because they're so pretty, mm -hmm. I really, really like them. So... Look how well these all go together. They're I mean, pretty isn't that together. Pretty? They are pretty together. So Emily gave me, I get one of the first gains, actually the first gain. The first gain. From her Secret Garden collection. And this one is Clusters of Crocus. And it is really, really pretty. I think our camera is not showing Gotta colors quite as well. Gotta see the green well. in there, yeah. No, that's really pretty. I love that green. Here's another version of it. Because I brought it too. Got that chartreuse -y, bright Love it. yellowy green in there. And oh, I just popped the label off of this one. That's okay. And she dyed me this beautiful skein with blues and yellows that when they merge together, you get a little bit of green in there. That looks really pretty. And then this one, which I just accidentally pulled the label off, was a gift from a really sweet friend. And she sent me from one of my favorite dyers, which is Artistic Lily. It's mm. birthday confetti. That's so pretty. I have a little birthday cupcake. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, so fun. So fun. And such oh, fun, bright, I need spring. Springy Actually, colors. It feels like spring today. The snow is it's almost beautiful. melted. The sun is out. It's, it's just, sunny. Oh, it's so lovely. Yes, it so is. So lovely, so lovely. Anyways, that was just really fun. I had some other sweet gifts, but my main gift was that I, I'm going to Stitches West. So that was what I told my husband I wanted. Yes, what I wanted. I said I want to go see people. So that's what I'm doing. I cannot wait. I, I seriously don't. can't wait. I'm like, <laughs> I love it, Four but weeks. the Four introvert weeks. in me is like, yay. Oh, but remember, I'll so be well. there. I, I will I will take I will take the brunt of it for you. <laughs> like it sounds really exciting. And I'm always glad when I go. Yeah. But the actual leaving the door is the hardest part. I'm actually the same way. Yeah. Even though I'm an extrovert, I'm still the same way. Because it's like the the day the night before we leave somewhere. I'm always like, why did I decide to do yeah. this? Yeah. Because it's stressful getting ready to go and Yeah. That's why I have to announce the things I'm doing so that there's not really any turning back because I would pretty much turn back every single time if it came down to it. Yeah. Yeah. But also I think the other thing is at the end, then I'm like, okay, now I have to recover for a while. Mm. But I really want to just do things. Just do more things, which have been on my list. So I'm really glad that we're going. Yes, me too. I'm excited to see people and to experience new things. And also the weather is nicer in Santa Clara. Well, actually, I don't know about that because it's been pretty good here. Okay. But it is good. So we have two things. First, we have a knit along that we would like to mm -hmm. discuss and ask for some feedback on. Yep. Okay, we have quite yes. a few people that have been um, mentioning that they haven't knit socks, they're afraid to start knitting socks, and mm -hmm. I thought, what better way to get started than to have a sock knit along for newbies, but where you get to have some, some help. Right. I'm not describing this very well. No, it's I'm good. Like, Just <laughs> you're like talk for me, okay? You, you always have the words. I don't have the words. I don't so know if I'll be good. <laughs> We're thinking about doing a series of like live YouTube videos where we would do one day that's set aside for casting on and your cuff, mm -hmm. um, another day for um, we probably wouldn't need one for the leg if we do just a vanilla sock. But mm -hmm. we would kind of do a series of live videos spaced out and with enough time that you could hopefully work your project and then come and join us for the video to get help on the next step of yeah. your project. So it would show you how to do the next step. Mm -hmm. You can ask questions and then you'd have some time to finish that and then yep. come back for the next one. Of mm -hmm. course, we are not experts in this field. It We're would be... only experts in that we've done a lot of socks ourselves, but we haven't done everything. And know. we do things sometimes our own way. I may do something yeah. different than the way you do yeah. it, but it's just, here's how we do it. And to give you that encouragement to help you get started. So yeah. if you feel like, ah, but I, I get stuck on this part and I don't know what to do. There's a lot of videos that show you how to knit socks. You can watch that. Absolutely. You can watch that. No problem. But we thought it would be fun to have kind of a community, mm -hmm. you know, where you have feedback, live feedback, where you can can ask specific questions right then and there. We can answer at least to the best of our knowledge. And right. where other people who have already knit socks can also help answer questions if needed. But we wanted to know if we did that, if there would be very much interest in it. So we're just kind of asking you to share and just comment below and let us know if that's something that you would want to participate in. Um, at the very least, as a knit along, if, even if you have knit socks before, if that would be a fun thing for you to do as a knit along. So yeah, let us know what you think about that. And then we will um, look at your feedback and our schedules and figure out if that's a good thing for us to do. But I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I think that that would be uh, beneficial specifically because we want to help enable all of you. Yes, to be <laughs> as addicted as we are. Enablers are us, yes. Okay. Now I have something I wanna talk about Oh, okay. Too. All right, 
So I just wanted to mention, oh, I have, I have mentioned on, um, Instagram that my new yarn brary collection is going to actually be releasing on Saturday, this coming up Saturday. And the book is the secret garden and my poor copy is pretty, pretty battered. So that well will loved. be true well of most of my books, <laughs> by the way, because we just love them. Yeah. Anyway, but this this version of The Secret Garden, which is illustrated by Tasha Tudor, is so sweet. It has the most beautiful illustrations in it, too. So it's really wonderful. But I'm so excited for this book because it is the perfect get you through the last little bit of winter and into spring book because that's exactly what, what's happening here. Um, if you haven't read it, it may be considered a children's book. Oh, it's for mm -hmm. all of us. It's so just beautiful and uplifting and and encouraging and healing. I mean, I think it's a healing book. Um, I just have to show you a few of the pictures. I was going to bring my copy in. I have one that's got illustrations yes. that are different. Here's this one. This is when Mary meets Colin for the first time. For those of you who've read the book before, and um, this, oh, this is my favorite, which is the same one as the front cover, but this is when she finally steps into the garden. So anyway, it's a beautiful book. And so the new colorways will be coming out on Saturday, and Deborah showed the one, um, the first one, which is Clusters of Crocus. If you're in, and by the way, the name of Clusters of Crocus is inspired by a song from the musical of The Secret Garden. So you should check the music out. Uh, you can find it on Spotify. It's gorgeous. Um, anyway, I'm going to be spotlighting colorways throughout this week for the new collection on Instagram. So keep an eye out there if I you are interested. Oh, Again. did you? Yeah. Oh, I'm I hoping people how much will read with this. I haven't read it since I was a child and I forgot how good it was. Yes. I have not been so enthralled with a book for a long time. I love reading. Yeah. And I'll but I've been just kind of like dabbling in one here and one here and mm. one here and I'm just mm, I can't settle on any of them really. But I'm almost through The Secret Garden. And, yeah. And I started it when you first posted. Which was just a few days ago. Yeah. I think oh. three or four days ago. I love it. I it's love it. so good. I hope you'll join us and read with me too. I mean, it's great to knit along, but let's read along and knit along yep. because oh, it's just so, 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 so good. It'd be so fun to read and knit with the yarn. Oh, oh, we need to knit something with flowery designs in it. I know, while, while we read. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember watching The Secret Garden um, when yes. I was younger. I can't find the version that I remember there's watching. A, okay, when you were. I really liked. There's a, an excellent movie um, of The mm. Secret Garden and it has Maggie Smith um, in it. It's so, so good. I and um, I remember it being really well, like it's very close well to done. the book. It, yeah, there's a few things um, as far as like the, the beginning, the setup of uh -huh. of Mary's, like where she came from, the main character. There's a few things that are not exactly, I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's faithful to the, to the general story and to the characters and the settings. It's just so delightful. And so, yes, I watched that with my nine-year-old daughter. And then she and I are um, starting this book together. But I've also been listening to the Audible, and I posted a link to my favorite Audible version on Instagram as well. It's narrated by Susan Durden, and she is um, the main narrator from the Guernsey Literary and Potato mm -hmm. Peel Pie Society, which is my favorite Audible book of all time. Um, I know some people don't enjoy it as much, but anyway, we don't need to talk about that one. I love it. She's um, one of the main narrators there, so you'll recognize her voice if you've listened to that one. Yeah, I already had an Audible uh -huh. book that I had downloaded of that, and I thought, I'll just start listening to that. I prefer to read it, because I can yeah. hear all of the voices the way I heard them when I was young. In yes, my head. <laughs> so. that's always good. The nice thing about an Audible book is it's easy to read and knit at the same time. It is. Or read and die yarn, is. as I have been doing. So <laughs> if I'm knitting, I'm watching knitting podcasts. Um, if I am sewing, then I listen to Audible books. Usually. Oh, nice. That's usually what I do. So I've listened to a lot more Audible lately. It's fantastic. So. Yes. So what else? We were talking about We need to things. have a favorite thing segment. Yes. OK. 
Okay, so. <laughs> Yay, our favorite, our top three favorite ways to get through the winter or ways to handle the winter. I don't know exactly how we want to describe that. What gets you through January specifically? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> January, usually right about now, I'm having some severe seasonal depression. Usually me too. It's usually pretty bad. Last year was was quite bad. Last year was horrible. This year's been better, partially because the weather. The weather, it's been like been, spring. It's been very, <laughs> we've had a like almost non-existent winter. Yeah. And so this one has been much better, but usually it is quite bad. Mm -hmm. So I have thought, I just need to move somewhere where there isn't really winter. And then I realized <laughs> that's just not a realistic no. <laughs> goal. And instead, I need to come up with ways to get through the winter and mm -hmm. to also just, not just get through, but to enjoy it. Yeah. So. All right, tell me so your top three. So why don't you start three, your number, three. number three. Okay. okay, so number three is I need something to look forward to in the winter. Okay. So I usually like to plan some sort of trip or something that I haven't done before mm -hmm. or just something really big to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Last year, I planned a ski trip. I like I'm going or not trip, but I thought I'm going to learn to mm -hmm. ski and I'm going to go try it. It's on my bucket list and I'll have that to look forward to. I am really glad that I crossed that off my bucket list. <laughs> And I don't ever need to go back to it. <laughs> you don't ever have to do that again. Yes. This year, the thing to look forward to is I was turning 40 and having a fun party. And, yeah. you know. So that's what I usually do is I usually plan something. That's awesome. So my number three, I think it might be on your list somewhere else, which is a sunlight at, or a, what do they call it, a mood light. Um, which is a light that you can use to sit in front of and feel like you're getting some sun and it can actually help increase your, um, I don't know, I don't know what the technical jargon is for all of that, but it makes you feel like you're getting some sun and it just it really helps a lot. And in fact, oh yeah, you brought your yep, journal. This is my number two. Okay. I call it my happy light. There you go. That's what we call it too. I'm turning it on. It's going to be bright. Are you oh, ready to be really happy? Bright. You ready to be happy? I have to turn those off. Here we go, ready to be happy. There. Ah! Oh, come on, get happy. <laughs> Chase our blues away. I also I like this button right here, which is the ion button. Yes. Now, one thing about these is it has to be 12 to 18 inches from your face. And it's blinding. It is blinding. It's so not I, comfortable. I put on a mask for my eyes because it's not about your eyes, it's about your skin absorbing. Mm -hmm absorbing that light but you have to be really close to it and you do it for like 15 mm -hmm. 30 15 to 20 minutes a day mm -hmm. so I actually have this in the bathroom oh, and turn it on idea. in the mornings when I need that that's now I have to remember idea. to turn this off so now my eyes are have to, recovering I have to adjust that's the thing that's hard for me is because I don't like to just sit and it's really challenging to just do this for a while yeah um and so but it's great but to help get ready in the morning to have extra light that's true so, i like the bathroom idea that's um brilliant. also along with that take extra vitamin d and b12 yes and that helps my mood that's good as well so that's my number three and your number two yep so what's your number two my number two you're gonna laugh but watch nature videos on tv like We've been watching Planet Earth 2 because you get, you know, especially if you've got one of these big screen TVs like we've got, you know, with the ultra high def and the new videos are shot in such amazing detail. It feels like, like you're, you're there, there. Yep. and there's just, you know, you're going to the rainforest and the jungles and things like that. So I love that. It actually feels like I'm going somewhere green and lush and with Last year, beautiful... last winter, we went downtown together yes. and saw a video where it was almost surrounded. It was in this round room, mm -hmm. and it surrounded like three quarters or two thirds of the way, mm -hmm. and it was like you were in this forest. And anyways, we just left. We're like, we're like, oh, we needed that. <laughs> yeah. That's actually been on my list. Like, if I start to feel like I'm there, I'm going back over there I have to watching keep that video. Time. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's why I keep looking back. I have to stay on so, topic. Today. Yeah. So that, but I have done a lot better this year. So that's yeah. not as big of a deal. But and my, I, I think that's a great one. My number one is very similar to that, mm -hmm. but it's actually go outside. <laughs> yes. I do not like to be out in poor weather. 
but if I force myself to go out and usually to do some form of exercise. So if I go and take my dog for a walk, mm -hmm. um, just it mostly it's leaving the house. I have to force myself to leave the house. And this year I started going um, swimming and take my dog for a walk and that always helps. Even if it's in poor weather, just getting outside makes a big difference. And it's the hardest part, like I said before, yeah. is stepping out the door. <laughs> And once right. I've done that, then it's all, you know, fine from there. But that's my number one mm -hmm. thing that I have to do is just to leave and go do something. I love um, Amanda from Little House Big. She's Little House Big Woods on Instagram. And she's Amanda Makes Yarn um, on Etsy. But she has, you know, she's been posting that hashtag outside every day. Mm -hmm. and she's out in all weathers. I see other people like Yarn Harlot. She's outside every day. And I'm just going, I need to be better at that. And, you know, mm -hmm. neither of us do well in heat no oh. and I feel like I do just as poorly in the cold yes I do not basically we're wimps yes <laughs> like seriously <laughs> yes when it comes to temperature not in, because like we're pretty pretty tough in tough most in most ways <laughs> well I, as long as I am not hungry and I'm either perfect like not cold and not hot I can handle anything <laughs> pretty much it but if I'm hungry or I'm cold and I'm hot, I am a beast. So. Oh, I struggle with that too. So that's hard. But that's the other thing. Just when I'm going to go out and it's cold, I just need to dress properly. Dress yeah. appropriately for the weather. Yes. And that's okay. Yes, I understand. It's okay. That. It's just making myself do it. I love that. Outside every day. Yep. So. so my number one is de-junking. Oh, that's good. Um, taking January to just clear out. We have donated or thrown away I think something like 35 garbage bags like kitchen garbage bags the bigger ones full of stuff plus countless boxes above that um, we've just been in this de-junking mm -hmm. thing um, in kids rooms in the kitchen and so much more to go it just lightens everything yes it, it feels lightens. very freeing yeah. and it feels like um, I have control over something because I think one of the things that's hardest for me in the winter is I start to feel really claustrophobic and trapped. So I'm sure that getting outside and trying to bundle up better and doing that um, would also help with that because I start mm -hmm. to feel just really trapped. But clearing out yeah. helps with that as well. So, okay, I, I definitely have other things that I like to do, but I think those are the, the three mm -hmm. that are usually more guaranteed to help yes. lift my mood, yeah, me get too. me out of that funk. So I think it goes without saying that it should also be be creative. That's an every day. Yes. I think I need to be creative every day. <laughs> but yeah, that should go without saying. <laughs> right. So let's just assume that that's a given. Okay. So why don't you tell us your top three yes. ways that you get through uh, difficult seasons, especially the winter, the dreary, long, dreary winter. And I know for a lot of you, you love the winter and it's not an issue for you, but for a lot of us, we really struggle with yeah. that. So share your ideas and suggestions below. We always love, love to have feedback. And please go and join us in our Ravelry group. We have become active again. <laughs> Deborah okay. has become I more have active, become active again. again. And I, I go in there like, oh. I mean to. I've left for so long, people have forgotten <laughs> that it's here. And I feel I really, bad. I've never been good at a forums situation like that, mm -hmm. like bo boards like that. I think mostly what it is is I'm wanting to connect with people yeah. more. And so I've been, been back in there. That's awesome. So um, come join us on over there where we have a thread where you can ask us. Uh, questions because we often get those in some of the other threads which is fine mm -hmm. but that's that's the best one for that if you have questions for us yeah. that you would like us to answer and if you haven't by the way this is just a little shameless plug please if you've enjoyed what we've been chatting in our sometimes rambly <laughs> nature subscribe please we'd really appreciate that so. yes and I have started to notice that there's a thumbs up and a thumbs down button I never even check those and Wow, you guys are really generous with your <laughs> thumbs up. Thanks. And there's a few people that thumbs down like on every video. And I'm I thinking, know. if you don't like it, why, why are you are still here? here? But I think there are people that they watch just so that they can thumbs everything oh, down. Oh, I think you're right. So 
the first time that I got <laughs> one of a, those. That's a fun life. Yeah, the first time I saw one of those, I forgot about it since then. It was devastating to Aww. me. I almost didn't, po it was after my first one and I didn't, almost didn't podcast again. And then I was like, care for it. Not everybody has to like what you're yeah. doing. And I forgot about it since then. But anyways, I've because I forget about it, I'm trying to like thumbs up on everybody's videos to tell I know, them. I need to be better to at that too. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. I have one last thing All right, what here. Wait, where's my paper? Oh. Nope, it's not happening today. Okay. Never mind, not she happening today. She has one last thing for our next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that I'll share on our yes. next one. Which so. will be in February, which is one step closer to March. <laughs> <laughs> and almost to April. Yay! It's going to be floor, like flowers everywhere. Uh, and then soon it will be summer, which is my favorite. Uh, <laughs> I like I'm summer. like, can we just say spring and autumn? I like summer because then there's vegetables to be. That's true. You know. If we could have like two weeks of winter and, and a month of summer and the rest could just be spring and fall. I, I uh. can. I still like summer as long as I can go inside really often to cool yeah. down. So. I just, summer just means work for me. That's all. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, you say summer and I go, I'm tired. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's okay. Well, that's all right. That's okay. okay. Whatever. Thanks for joining us again. Yes. We hope you come back and visit with us some more. Awesome. Yeah. See you soon. Bye. Bye.